Today's video is uh, it's to talk about confirmation bias. Why did I choose my place? Why did I choose the Cimarron River and Cimarron Canyon in New Mexico? And uh, why did I choose Maverick Creek and uh, that whole area there uh, and not leave it? I never left my area uh, uh, off that river. And I stayed in the majority of the time near Maverick and Ponderosa until the end then um, on my last trip, ninth, ninth trip, I kind of got some other ideas that I thought I'd fool around with that involved the Cimarron River, but it was uh, a different, uh, you know, uh, methodology in my thinking. But I chose New Mexico because that's where Forrest Finn lived when he got the cancer, so I figured it was probably close to there. Um, and I, I believe that he probably spent some time on the Cimarron River with his dad when his dad was alive. So I think there's some memories there. So uh, I, I, I think that's a good reason. I think also there was some reasons I was there and my confirmation bias was that, um, you know, there were specialized trout there. He was a fly fisherman, you know. He, uh, he loved trout fishing and it was only two hours away from his house. So yeah, of course he'd be there. There's history there. There was uh, Wild West there in Cimarron. It was a crazy town with a lot of history, a lot of Indian history there, a lot of cowboy in, uh, history. Uh, even the, uh, the cavalry was there, you know, the U.S. cavalry was not far away from there. And they had a lot of run-ins. Famous people, Annie Oakley, uh, Kit Carson. Um, Bat Masterson, you know, all these, a lot of famous Western people besides the Ute Indians. Uh, it had a lot of history, and we all know he was a, uh, I would say, you know, a, a amateur uh, uh, archaeologist, if you will, but becoming one, uh, you know, he, he became very knowledgeable in it. I'm trying to rush this, and I'm not, I'm fumbling with my words, so I apologize. I'm trying to get through the list so it's not too long. So I think there was a draw there, more than just, you know, why would he go there? Uh, I think he went fishing with his father there, history, uh, and the Wild West, and archaeology, and he loved looking for things that was Old West type ideas. Um, there was, uh, so you had that, uh, they had the Cimarron River, it did go down, so you go in the canyon down from Wheeler Peak, I believe Wheeler Peak was uh, where warm waters halt, where the snow is, you can disagree with me. But it was the highest peak in New Mexico. Not was, it is. It is the highest mountain in New Mexico. And you remember that's where he went in that area to, um, to uh, put uh, Ogle's ashes. So uh, I felt that that was critical. And it also tied into the Blue Lake that was on the mountain that where the Taos Indians, you know, thought creation started, so what a good place to start in the beginning on the highest mountain. He was an aviator, he would have to know that was the highest mountain in all of New Mexico. Okay, so that's what started leading me in this quest. Um, so then you're looking for creeks, there was Clear Creek, uh, I watched videos on it and it looked very um, touristy, you know, so I, I kind of shied away from Clear Creek. Uh, but then I found Maverick Creek, I explained yesterday why Maverick Creek which was way down at the end of the canyon, uh, going towards Ute Park. And um, I chose that because Forrest Finn was a, um, he was a, a private when he went into the Air Force, but then he became, uh, uh, he became a major. And I was watching a uh, documentary on that, um, that, uh, he, uh, that they said in Vietnam, during the Vietnam War era, that if you went in as an enlisted man but became an uh, officer, they called that person a maverick. He mentions it twice in the book, I think, and a couple of times even at Moby Dickens, he said he was a maverick. And so, okay, Maverick Creek. So I'm, I'm hot on the trail. And as I stated yesterday, we found a cross across the, uh, the valley, if you will, or the canyon, it's a canyon, uh, over on the Ponderosa side that there was a cross there. Uh, and so that really heightened my, uh, my antennas and my interest. And so all these things started developing. So I'm going to kind of run over a list here of why I think uh, my confirmation bias was that he 
was taking us on a spiritual journey. Uh, number one and foremost, the goal that he hid was in what he called a Romanesque chest, a Bible box, he said, or a book of days. But he always said a Bible box. And so the Bible, you know, he was a Christian. It's evident by all three books. He talked about Moses uh, in one of the books, the later books. And in the other book, he talked about go getting my Bible. He had his own Bible. Telling me that you don't just say go get the Bible. Uh, if it's generic, but if it means something to you, go get my Bible. And I think that's in the third book. So all these little bits and pieces came out. He shot metal arcs on Sunday after church. Um, his father was buried in a uh, Baptist church, or not buried, he was, excuse me. The funeral was held in a Baptist church. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm wanting to find out the whole, you know, person and, and you know, what would a guy, where would a guy want to be when he died? And if he was a Christian, he'd want to have some kind of connection with that. Now, we also know that he said his, uh, and I think it's in the first book, that his church was in the mountains. The mountains where the Cimarron Canyon go through are called the Sangre, whoo, I did that pretty good, now I'm half Mexican, the Sangre de Cristo mountains, the blood of Christ mountains. Okay, he's a Christian, uh, this canyon goes through the blood of Christ's mountains, and uh, so I thought, okay, there's another little confirmation bias. The book, uh, Thrill of the Chase, uh, began with Alpha, a big Alpha, uh, I forgot what they're called now, uh, you know, font, and it ends with the double omegas, Alpha and Omega, and we all know that the Alpha and the Omega is the beginning and the end, and there's only one person called the Alpha and the Omega, and that's Jesus Christ. Confirmation bias, okay? Um, and so um, we see all these things that have some kind of spiritual meaning uh, and could have. So I'm, I'm hot on this trail. I find a cross uh, up above uh, Ponderosa Campground. Uh, we're near Maverick Creek, uh, which he was a maverick. Uh, we're in a canyon down, there's specialized trout, there's history there, you know, uh, uh, he could have got there and hid the treasure and got home by dinner time uh, if he left early in the morning. Uh, it's all doable, it's all a very logistically correct place that this could have happened. The cross was there long before Forrest hid the treasure. I know most every uh, <laughs> and or met every uh, park ranger in Cimarron Canyon and talked to park rangers and the governor's office. I've talked to uh, a lot of people, but I know a lot of park rangers in um, Cimarron, uh, in the Cimarron Canyon, and they all say that cross has been there since they've been there, you know, since they were little. And uh, so it tells me it was there long before, uh, and it's still there long before uh, uh, Forrest hit it. So uh, the cross. So when you think of the cross, uh, you think of Jesus. You think of uh, the greatest trailblazer that ever lived. There's been more books, more hospitals, more schools, more orphanages, uh, churches, uh, and there's billions of Christians on the face of the earth. And, the, and it all came from one person, Jesus Christ, who is the greatest trailblazer. And what trail did he leave? What markings did he leave? If you look anywhere and you see a cross, we have one in here in Boise. Uh, there was one in San Leandro, California. There, a cross was a sign of Jesus, okay? It was a blaze, okay? It also, this cross sat on top of a giant mound of uh, granite rock. I don't know how many feet up, maybe a thousand feet up, 600 feet up. I'm not good with that kind of stuff. But the cross was planted in this granite, uh, which um, right above the Ponderosa campground, you can look at uh, Google it. You can't see the cross from um, uh, Google, but uh, I've got pictures and maybe I'll post them later. But um, that the cross was there, the granite was there, and if you look up the word gra uh, granite, and it says it on many signs in the Cimarron Canyon that a lot of this rock, including the granite, was Ingeus rock. And Ingeus rock is, Ingeus is from a, um, is, is, is a Greek word, and it means fire rock, 
okay, that it was created by the lava and the pressure and the magma below and was pushed up. And so granite is a fire rock, if you will, ingeous rock. So I had a double, you know, confirmation bias there. I have a cross that Jesus was the greatest trailblazer. We had the ingeous rock. We're in the San Sangre de Cristo Mountains. Uh, there's an Alpha and Omega in the book. Uh, he went to church. His father's funeral was in a Baptist church. And so I am just stuck on this, and I cannot get this stuff out of my mind. And I would think that if I was dying, that, um, you know, I would probably want some kind of, in, uh, you know, identification with, uh, you know, the Lord, with Jesus. Um, and uh, all these things are very spiritual. In fact, the water coming out of the dam, the first part of it, uh, is, it's this, that's where the Cimarron begins, is out of Eagle Nest Lake Dam. That's where the beginning of the Cimarron River uh, starts. Because you have the lake on one side, Eagle Nest Lake. On the other side of the dam, that's called Cimarron River. Uh, uh, and so that river goes from New Mexico all the way to Texas, from where uh, Forrest was from. And that, that first stretch of water uh, is a very popular place where they have a, a place called the Hacienda de, de Cimarron. And uh, that means... Uh, <laughs> uh, the house of brown, if you will, because Cimarron also is, a, uh, is referenced as a color brown. One time on my computer, I uh, popped in uh, Cimarron, and I think it was Keller Moore Paints, uh, popped up a color of what Cimarron was, and it was brown. I asked a friend of mine who happened to be a plumber, have you ever heard of that? He goes, yeah, we sell toilets that are brown, and they're called Cimarron brown. So to me, there was another confirmation bias. You got the Hacienda de Cimarron, the trout place there that was a trout, famous trout fishing place that I would think that Forrest would be there, owned by the um, CS Cattle Company, uh, Charles Springer, okay, very famous guy, and they loved artwork, so I can imagine, you know, that family and uh, Forrest probably hobnobbed together, and Forrest probably even stayed in the Hacienda de Cimarron, but that particular patch of water is called the holy waters okay i'm not making this up it's called the holy waters so you have all these spiritual references you got a river that's called brown it means wild and un cimarron means also it means wild and unruly like an unruly calf or a horse uh, because it, before the dam that place used to flood out um, but uh, the color is brown so you got brown trout. I mean, I had so many browns there that I was, you know, I, I was full of brown. <laughs> Let's not go there. So anyway, so you have this river that starts there going below the home of brown. Uh, if a spot on that river where there was Maverick Creek or up closer by the Hacienda de Cimarron or by the Horseshoe Mine, uh, you got uh, right across from the Horseshoe Mine, if you look it up on Google, there's a and I just was there uh, May 1st. Uh, there's this big mountain there, and it has uh, what looks like two upside-down horseshoes. And at the bottom of the right horseshoe looks just like the picture that's on page 99. So Google that. Zoom in on, on uh, uh, you know, Cimarron Canyon. Look at, um, the find the horseshoe mine, which is about two miles from the... Um, from the dam area and across on the, what is that? I think it's the north side. It's, it's a kind of a crazy the way the canyon sits. It's not perfectly north and south. But uh, <clears throat> it would be if you're leaving Eagle Nest Lake going towards the town of Cimarron, it would be on the left side, okay? But across from the Horseshoe Mine, there's two upside down horseshoes, and I guess that's why they called it the Horseshoe Mine. But it looks very similar to the picture that's on page 99 that looks like there's an arrow pointing down. There's an arrow on that right horseshoe. So that was my last uh, place that I went to, uh, that area and Clear Creek, uh, on May 1st, 2020. But my main thrust had, uh, for eight trips was always uh, Maverick, 
Creek and across at Ponderosa. I, I know those, that area just like I know the back of my hand. I, I've been there so many times. I went nine times total, but I stayed there four or five days going up and down four or five days times nine. So you can do the math. So that was my confirmation by, uh, bias um, as to why I was in Maverick Creek, the Ponderosa um, campground area up in there, uh, was because of the cross. And I thought that Forrest Finn was trying to not only take us on an actual treasure hunt for literal gold, but I thought as a Christian that he was uh, starting us off at, at uh, a place where the Indians said that's where their creation start was in, uh, you know, that they were, they came out of the Blue Lake. That's their tradition, uh, which is on Wheeler Peak Air, uh, Mountain. And I began to, you know, put this together that he, he's talking about almost like an idea of, of uh, from creation to a cross, you know. And um, someplace along that, that, that pathway there, uh, he probably had some special moments with God and or his father and maybe even his family, you know, uh, or with, uh, uh, you know, one of his friends. I forgot the name of those two friends that he had. Uh, it's it's uh, eluding me right now. But I thought it was a spiritual adventure as well. Besides the physical gold, I thought he was also because the gold was in a box or a chest that contained a Bible. And we know that what the Bible talks about is redemption of mankind, the salvation of mankind, the resurrection of life. That after you die, you know, you're either going up or down, but Jesus says, if you believe in me, you know, and whosoever believes in me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That as a Christian, that's our hope. And I, I was thinking that Forrest Finn was trying to do a dual thing there. Besides this wonderful adventure he was putting us on, he was leading us to the cross of Jesus Christ where we can know about God's love and God's mercy and God's forgiveness. And, um, and I think one of his bells even said something to that effect that God uh, is gonna, uh, has got to forgive me because that's what he does. And so um, I wanted to share that with you so that uh, you can see my confirmation bias included not only the person of Forrest Finn, his love for fishing and archaeology and, you know, trout fishing and uh, history, but, you know, he also, it was fun. It was a fun adventure, and I'm sure there's going to be other things that uh, will come up uh, about treasure hunting and so on, uh, but for now, I'm... I'm I'm done with uh, this, as uh, most people are. But uh, thanks, Forrest. God bless you. Wish you the very best. You changed a lot of people's lives. And I, uh, I, I wish you the very best. So uh, thanks again.